Hey guys, Chris here from Chef Wannabe's Life. Today I'm going to share something with you that I have never shared with my subscribers, nor have I ever shared with my readers from Food Thoughts of a Chef Wannabe, and I decided that it was time to share this so that maybe it'll help someone, maybe it'll help you understand something more about me, and I'm really nervous. This is the third time I've tried to film this video, and it is hard. It is hard to come out with this. So, if you want to know what I am, keep watching. What am I? I am a woman, a wife, I am a sister, a daughter, I am an aunt, I'm a friend, I'm a Nona, I'm a mom, I'm a mother-in-law, and I am bipolar. Let me start from the beginning. I'll kind of rush through the early years and then get up to where I am now. As a teenager, I suffered depression. I never took medication for it. I was never diagnosed. I just always knew that something wasn't right with my feelings. I knew that I was I was an extremely moody young adult and I don't mean that as, you know, oh, isn't she moody? No, I had extreme moodiness. It affected my life, it affected decisions that I made, and it just kind of got a little bit out of control a few times. And so, when I met my husband, I, I was having some issues, and it was just very apparent in my life that I needed to see someone about this. So I did and I went on depression medicine for about a month and then I went off of it. And then nothing ever again. So fast forward to 10 years ago when we moved to Nebraska, I became geographically closer to some things that essentially caused my depression. I'm a victim of childhood sexual abuse and these things have all played a part in my diagnosis. My mom was never diagnosed bipolar, but I am 99.9% .9 sure she was also bipolar. She, she had many of the same symptoms that I have and Essentially, bipolar is hormonal. Um, it's a hormonal disorder. You don't ever fix it. You don't ever get over it. But it has helped me understand, now that she's unfortunately gone, I understand much more about what she went through. And I wish I could have been more caring about that. But a few years ago, I had an episode I had a lot of up and ups and downs. Most of you know that I am visually impaired. And so the loss of my independence with like driving and breaking things constantly or falling constantly all just got to me and and to lose to lose that feeling of being able just to do anything by myself made me crazy. And there had been a few episodes in the last probably four or five years that led me to believe maybe something more than just depression was going on. So I went on medication, I talked to my doctor, went on medication, I was having terrible anxiety also. And so after a couple of years, it was, well, January will be two years since I was diagnosed. I went to the doctor and I talked to him about, I talked to him about my depression medicine not working. 
and I said that I just felt like it wasn't working like it once did. And so he put me on a new medicine called Effexor. When I went on that medicine, within about 24 hours, what I know now is I had gone manic. I suffer from rapid mood swings, very low to very high. I don't go into full-fledged mania, but I suffer hypomania, which is mania just on a smaller version. I'm getting ahead of myself. So he put me on Effexor, and within 24 hours, I was nearly climbing the walls, and I told my husband, something isn't right with this medicine. So we kind of chalked it up to maybe my body adjusting to the medicine, and so we waited another day, and I was, I was feeling crazy. I felt like I was going to crawl out of my skin, much like I am now. If you could see me shaking because I'm so nervous about this. Um, so, I finally said to him on the third day, either you have to take me to the emergency room or we have to call the doctor because something isn't wrong. I feel like I'm going to crawl out of my skin. We were driving in the car and I literally felt like um, I, I literally felt like I wanted to like open the door and jump out. Not in a suicidal fashion, in a I had to, it's like I just had to escape myself because I, I couldn't stop. My mind was racing. I hadn't slept in two days. I didn't know what was going on. So we called the doctor and he said to go off of it immediately. And the next morning I went in to be seen. So I did a few little questionnaires and I talked to someone in the clinic that was not my doctor. And they came back and he sat down and he said, I put you on the Effexor because of something I suspected. And your reaction was exactly what I thought might happen. He said, you don't suffer just depression. I firmly feel you are bipolar. So I kind of had this little bit of a meltdown. My husband was with me and I thought anything I'd ever seen about bipolar was like people in a mental ward having episodes, not necessarily staying there, but having episodes where they were in a, a mental ward and having to stay there for a period of time, getting out, and I thought, oh my gosh, not only like am I losing my vision, I lost my independence and ability to drive, now I'm losing my sanity. This is fabulous. He also told me that this is almost always inherited from the mother. And so I walked out with some new medicine, a mood stabilizer, and went on my merry way. This is where the blessing of all of this comes in. If you are on medication for mental health or physical health, you know that many times it takes a long time to get the right formula of medication. There's either too much of this, not enough of that. What I am on is what I was put on at the very beginning, the first time, right when I was diagnosed, and it has worked for me like a miracle. I mean an absolute miracle. Now, that being said, I also suffer PTSD and generalized anxiety disorder those I have been all diagnosed with. And so <clears throat> my OCD <laughs> that I suffer is part of my PTSD as well as my anxiety. So what does all of this mean to you or to anyone around me, my family, my friends? It means sometimes I'll go weeks without answering your phone calls or your texts. I'll go weeks without uploading videos. I'll go months without writing a recipe or publishing a, a new recipe on foodthoughtsofashefwannabe.com. I will barely be able to function some days 
and then there are other days where I can go to bed at 2 in the morning and be up at 5 in the morning and I can do that for a month straight because I have so much energy. So on those days, I try to accomplish a lot of things. When I say that I suffer from hypomania, many people with bipolar go completely manic and they become irresponsible with money. They become sexually promiscuous. Many of them suffer substance abuse and alcoholism. It's really serious that way. And so I thankfully don't suffer that type. Um, I am bipolar too. And even though my medicine works amazing, there are just times, it's just the nature of the beast. It's, it's part of the territory. You're still going to have the ups and downs. My downs can last a day or two. And my ups can last a day. I mean, it, it literally, generally, it is just so rapid. It's so rapid for me. My husband, bless his heart, my husband, I mean, that poor man can come home after work and just never know who he's dealing with. That kind of, of extreme doesn't happen a lot. And I have become very good with communicating with him. Maybe before he comes home, I'll email him and I'll say, I woke up, took all my meds, but I'm just feeling like I'm kind of going down. And when he comes home, you know, he'll say, is there anything you need to talk about? Did something trigger it? Oftentimes it's dreams. Um, I, I do wake up with anxiety attacks from time to time and I have nightmares and um, it's hard. It's hard for people to understand or to grasp because they think you're on medicine. Why is this such a big deal. Like, why can't you just be happy? Why can't you just, you know, well, you can't, when you have a hormonal deficiency or a hormonal issue, for lack of a better word, you can't always just decide to be happy. I mean, I am so content and happy and excited about life right now. But I may wake up tomorrow and I, and I don't really feel like there's any reason to even get out of bed. Or I can wake up like I'm feeling fine, do what I normally do, make my coffee, get to work on my computer, and suddenly, bam, it'll just hit me. Does that happen a lot? No. Does it happen? Absolutely. So if I say no to making plans with someone for a while, that's... It's just, it is what it is. I find it really difficult to make a commitment and then stick with it. Even something as easy as, let's go out to dinner on Friday night. By the time Friday afternoon gets here, I have so much anxiety. And lots of that will also stem from my vision. Are we going somewhere where there's stairs and I don't know? Um, we, I don't know the layout. What if I miss a step and I fall? What if, you know, it just, it's a myriad of things that go through my head. Some that most people would think were completely irrational. Again, unfortunately, that's the nature of the beast. So, this has been, I was diagnosed two months before my mom passed away. And I feel like in the last six months, I've seen a slow progression of it getting worse. Ugh, that's really hard to admit, but I feel like it's coming time. I'm going to have to see the doctor again about some new medicine or something. I go to therapy regularly and I, I have great people. I have an amazing support system here. And, and I, 
I'm not I'm not lacking in any of those great blessings but you know if you see me post sometimes at 2 in the morning 3 in the morning it's probably because I decided to do the dishes after my husband went to work and then that turned into scrubbing the floor and then scrubbing the cupboards and then doing laundry while I'm doing that and then I might as well scrub the bathrooms that's all how that happens and um, what essentially I'm gonna back up a minute I, I skipped telling you essentially what caused me to go in was that one day my husband came home from work I was sitting on the bathroom floor crying he came in he thought that I had fallen and I said no I didn't fall I didn't fall but I can't get the bathtub clean enough there's a ring around it and I can't scrub it out and he looked I mean imagine his shock he said honey the bathtub is sparkling no it's not I can't get it clean enough I can't do anything good enough nothing I'll never be good enough I I can't do anything right and this is when he took me in his arms and he whispered in my ear and he said it is time to get help and you know mental illness is so selfish you don't realize always that you're dragging your children or your husband or your family through the mud with you but for those who love you and who are there for you they're, they're following too. They're trying to hold on to you and you're dragging them right through the mud puddles with you. And I try my best to always stay positive because that, when I'm talking to you guys and I'm sharing with you guys, I feel like I, I have purpose. I feel like if someone, you know, if I say something that might help someone in their life or might make their really crummy day better, then awesome. Then it was exactly what I wanted it to be. And so by sharing this with you, I would just like you to know a little bit more about me. I am going to try to be doing an upload schedule here soon, but I don't know if I can do it. I I just don't know if I can do it. We're, we're going to see. My recipes have slowed way down. That's not because I'm no longer interested in my blog or my website or all of my followers and readers on all of my social media. It's just that sometimes I can't physically get myself to do anything. And I am so grateful and so blessed with an amazing understanding husband because for me in my marriage I enjoy keeping my house clean for my husband to come home to a clean and inviting home having hot food on the table for him having his laundry cleaned I find joy in that like I that just fulfills me to the core and there's just days I can't do it. And it just makes that little voice in me say, see, you aren't good enough. You aren't good enough. Because you aren't getting up to make sure that, that you're doing your part to take care of your husband. And myself, for that matter. So, it is difficult. And if any of you suffer with this or with mental illness, you can always feel free to email me or or message me on one of my direct messages me on Instagram or Facebook or here and and we can talk about it or maybe I can help you through a rough spot or maybe you can help me I just do the best I can to live the best life I possibly can and to provide the best life that I possibly can for those around me my grandchildren my children my my family it's just it's really hard sometimes so I am doing everything to help myself that I can through medication through therapy through prayer through all kinds of things and I am so grateful that you all stuck through and listened to this but I just wanted to share this really personal thing about me because 
it affects my presence on my social media, on my YouTube, on my website. And so it was like only fair that you all know it's not because I don't care about those things anymore. By the way, happy seventh birthday, food thoughts of a chef wannabe .com, a couple weeks ago. And <clears throat> so that's it. That's what I am. It doesn't define who I am, but I am a person with bipolar and I want to be somebody's hope that you can live a normal life. I'm not ashamed. I wouldn't be ashamed to tell you if I had cancer. I don't want you to be ashamed either. I think my, I think because I love to laugh, I get through the hard times a little bit easier. So I'm thankful for that. Thank you, Dad, for the sense of humor. So I hope that you're all having a great day. Let me know in the comments below if you have any kinds of videos that you would like to see from me that you haven't seen. And let's do this. Let's do this thing. And um, keep living a great life. Keep laughing. Keep cooking. And to always keep eating good food. Bye, guys.